Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name's Dr. Ash and this is the channel where we help you along your journey to medical school to make sure that you get into your first choice at the first attempt. So how do we approach ethical scenarios? What I want to introduce to you is something called the four pillars. Now you may have heard of this and think that it's maybe some sort of legal thing or known thing in the medical world, but actually all it is is a framework for how to approach medical scenarios. So I don't want you to think of it anything beyond just a list of things that you need to think about when you think of something from an ethical point of view. So we'll go through the four pillars now and I'll explain a little bit around each. The first is autonomy. Patients' autonomy means that they are at liberty to make informed, uncoerced decisions about their healthcare. It means that they have the right to make decisions about their life and their care and we must respect that. However, not every patient has the autonomy to make decisions about their care. And this is usually related to issues surrounding capacity. Now we're gonna talk about capacity a little bit later on in this video, but if you want an in-depth video about it where I go into it in a lot of detail, I recommend that you check out this video here. The next pillar is beneficence. What this basically means is that we should always aim to do good by our patients. So after looking at just the first two principles, we can see that situations might arise where these principles clash. For example, we've already looked at autonomy and beneficence, and the classic one where these clash are when a Jehovah's Witness patient comes in, they've had a traumatic injury and they're losing blood. And we're left in the scenario where we want to do right by them because we want to give them the blood that they need to survive. But at the same time, their principles and their right to choose says that they don't want the red blood cells. So there we have a clashing situation and that is a classic medical ethical scenario that comes up. So after this video where I've talked about how you can tackle any medical ethics scenario, I'm gonna actually release some scenarios and we're gonna talk through them and go through my four-step procedure for exactly how you should handle them. The third pillar of medical ethics is something called non-maleficence, and that essentially means do no harm. However, it's almost impossible to do zero harm to patients. Any tablet that you prescribe has the potential for side effects. Even things like taking blood, they do hurt, but on balance, they offer a net benefit to the patient. What we're essentially saying with this principle is that we should avoid any unnecessary harm to the patient. The final pillar is around justice. And what this is essentially looking at is, are our actions compliant with the law and the rights of the patient. This might be looking at things like advanced directives where a patient states ahead of time that if they should be incapacitated in certain conditions, what they would and wouldn't want to happen with regards to their healthcare. So this is a legal document that's drafted up by a solicitor and it might say something along the lines of maybe if they were severely injured and kept alive on a ventilator that they wouldn't want to be kept alive artificially beyond a certain point. That's just one of many possible examples for what they might say. Another document might be something called a DNAR and that is do not attempt resuscitation, which is a document that when a patient reaches a certain level, we deem that it's not worth attempting resuscitation should their heart stop. I'm actually gonna talk about it in another video that will appear here in a few days where I talk about this in a lot more depth. One question I get asked all the time is, what do you do if the patient is unconscious with regards to advanced directives or their autonomy or their justice? Well, in that circumstance, the doctor has a right to act under what they call the best interests of the patient. The other element of justice is asking whether our treatment is fair and balanced based on a societal perspective. So let's say, for example, a patient has abused their body and needs an incredibly expensive treatment. Is it fair to give them that treatment where we could use that same money to maybe treat 10 other cancer patients? And this is especially poignant in a national healthcare system like the NHS. If you want to make sure that you're bulletproof come interview time, it's so important that you start doing the groundwork now. The best way to do that is to get as much exposure as you can to all the kinds of things that might come up at interview so that you've mentally prepared and you've at least addressed it once in your mind so that you don't get phased. The best way to do that is by checking out this playlist here where we've done some in-depth long form workshops to go through all the stuff that might come up as well as some essential videos in that playlist that's going to tell you some of the key information. The other one that I'd recommend is my essentials playlist which gives a quick summary of everything, the first video of which is here. That will really help set you in a good way and summarize everything at the start so that you can kind of get an idea of what's to come and then at the end to give you a quick refresher just before you go to interviews. So thanks for watching and I'll see you over in those videos.